The COVID mandates were dropped a long time ago, but the aftermath still continues. Here's the story of a business that is being crushed by the almighty force of the Alberta Health Services. You're a pro bono lawyer representing a local business in Equil, Alberta. How does it feel to fight against multiple government lawyers? <laughs> well, it's challenging. Last time there were five, but this time, thankfully, there's only three. Um, it, you know, the reason we're here is for small Alberta business, because this is about an access to justice issue. And this did start during COVID. And what happened was a lot of illegal conduct in terms of um, taking cash register receipts from a business. Um, this business in Eckville, it sells coffee and it sells books. And what was happening was that AHS kept coming in and inspecting repetitively, more than 30 inspections. Um, this business was closed three times, but the chilling part of this is just how those rules were enforced against them. This can happen to any Alberta business. It's now three years afterwards. And what's going on now is that we're in the court and we're finally having the public health appeals decision reviewed. But to open this up for you, this has been a three-year journey and this family has been through it. Their business has been closed three times. They've had cash register receipts um, taken from them without a warrant under threat of arrest. Um, the owner had quasi-criminal charges put against her just based on the AHS inspection reports alone. And um, the quasi-criminal charges had fines of ten to $100,000 as well as 18 months in prison. So when those were placed against the owner, the other thing that happened as well was that um, the owner was declined, was not allowed to have legal representation because the same AHS inspectors who were inspecting the business, shutting it down, and had walked all these over these records to the Crown, they were also the Crown's key witnesses. So this also resulted in basically denial of legal representation. So when all of these serious issues come to a head, um, you got to say something. And I am just grateful to this family for doing what they've done. Um, it takes a lot to stand up and say, no, this is not the rule of law. This is not Alberta or Canadian law. And I think what we set out, the main argument I want to give you in court is that the people never had the legal authority to enforce these mandates in the first place. Um, those CMOH orders, if we look at them, as well as the Public Health Act, they all say an individual must mask or must distance. They don't say that you can do this to your neighbor. And that's the point of this case, is that when you really think about this, the most probably the most troubling part of it, Mocha, is that the Canadians who complied with Canadian law the most were the ones who were enforced against um, the harshest. Cup of coffee, this is what we have to start asking ourselves because the first time we went to court, the courts were rather concerned because this is over a cup of coffee. And, you know, our provincial government decided to regulate it and they put it in our food regulation. And I think what we need to start asking our government and um, our politicians is why aren't they taking the legislation out that they know are causing the problems now? So if we were to deregulate a cup of coffee, I'd like to know what the statistics are on, you know, harm, injury, death. I, I, you know, we're talking about Alberta businesses being prevented from earning a livelihood here. A lot of Albertans are wondering why can this be called moot? This happened. You can't change what happened in the past. Um, but here's the thing: we did overcome that challenge because what AHS is doing, this is not moot, and it's actually ironic because they actually go out and they post the um, inspection reports online. And so whenever you have an inspection, they're they're going to put that information out publicly. It doesn't matter if a judge or anybody else has reviewed it. That's what they deem to be correct. They will say that about your business and they'll post it. So does it become moot? Because those words don't go away. Now, ironically, last time we were in court, AHS announced they had changed their policy and now they're removing those words after three years. But that's the problem, is that you're tried, convicted, and sentenced and you don't even have the opportunity to be heard and, and state your side of the story. If you add corruption over enforcement um, to that, you've got a recipe for disaster when it comes to small business. So, Well, it certainly is, a, is an eye-opener for the public. The public should be aware of what is really happening. Uh, I, I cannot understand why AHS wants to bully people like a small business, five people making a living or trying to make a living out of a uh, coffee shop and a, and a bookstore. Um, uh, they've used their 
extraordinary powers or even overreach, actually, in many cases, it looks like, to do damage to this family. I don't understand it. You know, I know um, their counsel indicated that, you know, the process is the punishment. And truly, I believe that for three and a half years now they've been fighting this matter. You know, there's something wrong with the way uh, AHS is not accountable to the public anymore. It's accountable to only themselves because they're a private corporation and the government has given them um, authority to go and do these ugly things. You know, so what does that bode for the future of small business here? I'm troubled by that. Now, you've been, as I understand, you've been a longtime MP. And um, I want to ask you, is there anything that the Premier of Alberta can do to help this family? Uh, yes. She can begin the process of getting rid of all the legislation that allowed this organization like AHS to do what they're doing. Just scrub it, get rid of it. And, and there's no reason why she can't. It can be a decision that she makes and just unravel it all, but hold them accountable still. They have to be held accountable for what they're doing to the small businessmen in this country or in this province and in these communities. So yes, she is very much aware. The Premier is aware of, these, uh, of this overreach by AHS. Um, I, I think it's going to take just a, a major effort of will on her part and the Cabinet to do something about it now. It's in her hands because the future of small business is, in, is threatened here. Thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else you would like to say? Yes, I, I, I think there's a fundamental um, violation that has taken place here. Uh, the, the rights of, uh, of ordinary citizens to have protection under the law uh, is being threatened greatly here. Uh, I think that has to be renewed uh, with a renewed confidence that the government is going to do and protect the people whom they are supposed to serve, and that doesn't seem to be happening. If I may ask you, is there a place where people can donate to support you guys fighting back against AHS? You know what? I'll be honest with you. We have we have a give send go, but the money, any money donated, will go to the Coots boys and to those families and to any other Albertan who is struggling with this type of a legal situation. Uh, the work I've done with this is only pro bono, and just true to the words, um, the family has not taken a dime from this. They won't, and neither will I. And that money will be used to bring justice for others. So give send go. That's where they have a Stacy's Happy Place set up. Thank you very much. Do you have any last comments? Thank you for being here. I think if we're going to bring change, we need to fill up our courthouses and we need to fill up our town halls. And I appreciate your being here, Mocha. Thank you. You can support my work at mediabizergyan.com slash donate. Your help is appreciated. Thank you.